Good morning children hope you all are safe and happy at your places today we are going to start a new chapter of this session that is work force and energy and after reading this chapter you will be able to know what is force what are the various types of force what is work what are the different types of simple machines and what energy is right i hope you will like the video so go through it very carefully let's start the chapter with force first so dear children force is said to be simply a push or pull it is known as a force suppose i if i pull this chair towards me or i push this chair this will be said to as force applied right so a push or pull on an object is called as a force and you know dear children this force is very powerful it can do many things to a body let's now discuss what are the effects of force the first effect that force can make a stationary object move right suppose this chair is static it is not moving if i pull it towards me see now it comes in its moving position so a force can make a stationary object move or it can stop a moving object also like in football or in cricket you can stop the ball with your force next effect is force can change the speed of the moving object also dear children yes of course if some ball is coming towards you with a great force and if you apply your force in that if you apply the force of your hands or of your feet then definitely it is going to be stop right next effect is force can change the size and shape of an object now you will say how let me just tell you kneading the dough see when your mother kneads the dough for you to make rotis or to make chapatis she can easily change the shape of that kneaded dough right with her force okay so force can change the shape and size of the object as well last is force can change the direction of the object okay suppose if i throw this ball towards that direction and if i apply my force to right side then the ball is surely going to move towards the right side so dear children force is definitely going to change the direction of an object as well right now let's talk about the types of forces the first type in it is the friction or the frictional force now you will ask that what is friction now let me just tell you dear children friction is a force that occurs when two objects they rub against each other suppose if i rub this book on this bench on this table then what which force is in between these two objects that is the frictional force right see how these children are moving this couch they are applying their force and the force between the floor and the couch will be the frictional force right now there are advantages and disadvantages both of friction let's discuss first about the advantages of friction the first advantage is that if the friction will not be there then you will not be able to walk or run you will easily slip on that surface without friction okay dear children so this force is very important for movement of our bodies on floor or on the ground second point or the second advantage is that due to this friction we are able to write on a piece of paper with a pencil or a pen yes if the friction would not be there you won't be able to write on a piece of paper your pencil nib of the pencil or the nib of your pen will easily slip you won't be able to write on a piece of paper on that next is a pencil eraser also uses friction yes when you erase something written in your book or in your notebook then that eraser also works on the principle of friction next is friction is also needed for driving a car as i told you that this ground or the roads or the floor they also generate friction so moving a car or driving a car also needs friction to drive them smoothly otherwise the tires would just spin without friction and the car would not move next is friction produces heat like when you strike a matchstick 
right how uh, it gets burnt due to friction between matchstick and the matchbox now there are some disadvantages also of friction dear children okay let me just tell you what are the disadvantages of this such a wonderful force that is first one is friction causes wear and tear dear children due to this friction the tires of the vehicles they or your uh, shoe soles they get damaged because of the heat produced they get damaged okay the shoes they wear out because of this frictional force friction slows down the speed of trucks buses and bicycles right this is also one of the disadvantages that it slows down their speed next is machines also uh, the machine parts they also get rubbed together with the with uh, friction right and that is how we need to change the machine parts very frequently because they rub out against each other frequently and that is how they wear out so these all were the advantages and disadvantages of friction the second type of force that we are going to discuss is the gravitational force or the gravity very simple one gravity is simply the force force of attraction with which the earth pulls all objects towards itself see if i throw this ball upwards how it comes downwards how it comes towards the surface of the earth because of gravitational force gravity right so all the things that we throw upward or we are staying on this earth because of this very important force of earth that is the gravity next type of force is the magnetic force or magnetism see here a magnet has been shown in the picture and you can easily see how the nails are get, got have got attached at the ends of this magnet dear children these nails have got attached because this particular magnet has some magnetic force in it has some magnetic power in it due to which all the iron objects or objects made of cobalt and nickel they get easily attracted towards a magnet right so magnetic force is also one of the important forces next we have the another topic of the chapter that is work work right now you will say ma'am what is work done how we can say that work has been done or it has not been done see dear children work done is simply let me just tell you the definition first work done work is done when a force acting on an object moves it across a distance in the direction of force see if you apply something apply a force on something and the object moves in the desired direction like this child is moving this book towards his left so this will be said to a work done but here in this picture the child is not moving neither the book is moving right so no work done will be said in this picture right so work done is simply that when you move something move an object or pick an object pull an object push an object and that particular object goes in your desired direction then then uh, work will said to be done okay next we have simple machines a very interesting topic of this chapter simple machines simple machine now what is a simple machine it is a device that changes the direction or the amount of force needed to do some work it will decrease your force applied on an object it will make your work easier right now let us discuss about different types of simple machines the first type of simple machine is an inclined plane inclined plane any flat surface is called as inclined plane see a ramp the child is moving a wooden box upward and it's very easy to move upward because of this ramp this inclined plane right so this inclined plane is also one of the simple machines see dear children it's a flat surface i'm showing you picture of a bat i have placed it like this slanting position so this will also be called as an inclined plane when an object a flat surface is an in an inclined position or a slanting position that surface or that plane is will be known as inclined plane right so this will be an inclined plane and common examples are ramps you might have seen ramps uh, outside your homes 
right or you might have seen ramps uh, built on some trucks to lift or uh, you know heavy objects right lifting for heavy objects uh, so these all inclined planes they help in lifting heavy objects very easily right this is what uh, we use inclined planes for next type of simple machine is a screw screw see here in this picture actually screw is also an inclined plane wrapped around a nail see this is the screw and see beta i have brought a screw for you to show screw and you know these screws also make our work easier how because these screws help us to join two things together like if we we want to join a wooden plank a wooden uh, you know a plain surface with some iron object with some iron rod then these screws can be inserted with these two and they will be easily joined right so this is what a screw is it is also one of the simple machines next we have wedge now what what is wedge wedge is the two inclined planes meeting at a sharp edge very sharp things just like a blade a knife these all are examples of wedge see when two inclined planes they join at a at an edge see this is their edge these two inclined planes they have been joined and they this edge it is very sharp right so this becomes a wedge an example of wedge right and you know where these wedges are used these wedges are generally used in splitting things to cut things like an ax a knife a hammer these all are examples of wedge okay next type of simple machines that we are going to discuss are the levers levers right now levers simply they are simple machines that also make our work easier especially beta it involves three major uh, uh, we can say uh, terms in it that is the fulcrum a load and effort fulcrum effort and loads these are the three important terms that are a uh, major parts of a lever right now let me just tell you what types of levers do we have around us there are generally beta three kinds of levers depending on the position of the fulcrum see this is the major part this is a major component in a lever fulcrum right now let's discuss the three types of levers class 1 lever first class 1 levers in this type of levers the fulcrum is in the middle see here it is in the middle and the effort and load are on the either sides here the person is applying the effort and this is the load something uh, where the work has been done that is called the uh, load part right so the fulcrum is in the middle always remember in class 1 lever fulcrum is in the middle okay now let me just uh, show you some example where fulcrum is in the middle see a pair of scissors this particular point where these two blades have been joined this will be the fulcrum of this scissor okay and i am applying my force here at this point so this will be the effort and i will cut the paper at the another end so this will be the load from where i will cut the paper okay so fulcrum effort and load this is an example of class 1 lever right beside this moreover we have some crowbars and some claw hammers these also are one of uh, examples of uh, first class 1 levers right so this was all about class 1 lever next is class 2 levers remember in class 2 lever load is in the middle in the central position load right and fulcrum and effort are at the either ends right so examples of this class 2 lever are wheelbarrow you might have seen wheelbarrows nut crackers which help them uh, us to crack the nuts very easily like uh, walnuts etc next is a bottle opener see i have brought one bottle opener for you here the fulcrum this point will be the fulcrum which helps us to open up the bottle cap right so this point is the fulcrum this is the effort 
and this will be the load so load is in the middle fulcrum and effort are at the either ends right so this is an example of class 2 levers next we have class 3 levers remember in this type of lever effort and load see fulcrum and load fulcrum and load are at the either ends whereas effort will be in the middle effort see the person is applying his force in the central point so effort will be in the middle load and fulcrum will be at either positions okay now what are the examples some examples like tweezers tongs tongs are generally used in homes to pick up the chapatis or to make chapatis right and the fishing rod okay uh i have brought a tweezer for you to show how these uh you know class 3 levers they look like okay i'm i'm applying my force here from the middle to pick out something or to pick up or to pluck something right so this will be the effort point this is this joining point is the fulcrum where these two uh you know surfaces have been joined okay this is the effort and when i pluck something with the help of this tweezer this will be the load right so this is a tweezer and it is one of the examples of class 3 levers okay the next topic that is wheel and axle wheel and axle as the name tells that this type of simple machine has two major parts a wheel and an axle a wheel is strongly or rigidly attached to an axle see this screw, uh, this screw driver it's a wheel and this is an axle a rod like structure it is an axle okay so a screw driver is a very good example of wheel and axle a wheel a surface in which an axle is rigidly or strongly attached these type of simple machines are termed as wheel and axle right so we have two examples there in your book a screw driver and a door knob these two are examples of wheel and axle next we have pulley pulley simple a very simple machine you might have seen many pulleys around you like in a crane on a flag pole on sailing ships sailing uh, sailing boats right these all are examples of pulleys right now what a pulley is actually a pulley is made up of a wheel and a rope okay a rope is uh, being you know uh, simply rests in a groove of the wheel there right and it is most co most commonly used to draw water from well very easily simply they just uh, build a pulley on the well and the people they drag out water they draw out buckets of water in, from that particular well right so these pulleys they are also uh, the machines that make our work easier likewise a flag pole also has a pulley on it see here in the, on this position a pulley is been there okay and a rope is simply uh, you know attached to the groove of the wheel fine so these are some examples of pulley now let's come to the last topic of the chapter that is energy energy very simple one the ability or capacity of a body to do work how much ability you have to do some work that will be called as your energy right and energy is also present in different forms around us amazingly isn't it yes first we have the kinetic energy kinetic energy simply it is the energy that is possessed by a moving body see here this ball possesses the kinetic energy and the bat of the batsman also possesses kinetic energy since these all are in moving positions so they all possess kinetic energy in them right so this energy is due to its motion the motion of an object will be having kinetic energy in it okay next we have potential energy potential right when an object at is at rest see the child is simply sitting on a slide he hasn't slide yet he is just simply sitting on a slide right so his energy of his body will be the potential energy because he is not in motion he is just simply sitting on it right so he is sitting on the top of the slide that is why his body is possessing potential energy until unless he move downwards 
as soon as he move downwards the potential energy will be converted into kinetic energy since the body of the child has you know taken up some motion that is why the potential energy will be converted into kinetic energy so this is what this potential energy is right this is what the difference between these two energy is next type of energy we have that is the thermal or the heat energy thermal or heat energy simply if a body is hot having a high temperature then that body will be possessing heat energy or the thermal energy like the sun bonfire they all have heat energy in them right and you know how this heat energy can be measured it can be measured by a simple device which is named as thermometer right so thermometer can possess the heat energy or the thermal energy of an object next is chemical energy as the name tells very simple the energy present in the chemicals various chemicals like the food that you eat also has some chemical uh, you know substances in them chemical particles are there uh, food particles also have some chemical substances and these all they have chemical energy in in them right so this chemical energy of these food particles they help us to do our work they give us energy to do work right next type of energy is the electric energy electrical energy electrical energy is possessed by the electricity right and all the electrical appliances around you whether it's a fan it's an oven it's a bulb lamp or whatever you call they all move or they all work due to electrical energy right next we have sound energy as the name tells sound is also a form of energy dear children right so all the sound giving objects instruments like radio television and any other musical instrument they all have sources or they all are sources of sound energy and they possess sound energy in them next and the last is wind energy as you know moving air is called wind right and the energy possessed by the wind is called as wind energy and you know dear children this wind energy can be useful as well as destructive now how it can be useful this wind energy can be used to move the windmills to draw out water okay for grinding a wheat etc so this with these windmills are very useful in uh, instruments or very useful we can say machines right and they also work with the help of wind energy whereas if we talk about the destruction if this wind energy it uh, it exceeds its limits right then it can be destructible it can destroy many things right so i hope you like the video do watch it carefully again if you haven't understood the concepts thank you and have a nice day